Hello, everybody. Welcome to the latest Inside Rovers Away Days preview. Rovers heading to Gillingham on Tuesday night. Joining me to look ahead to that one, a man who played for both teams in, in Mark McCammon and editor of the Doncaster Free Press, Liam Hoden. Mark, a clash of your, your two old teams on Tuesday and both teams could really do with a result. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's going to be a tough battle. It's a, at the end of the day, the reality is it's a relegation fight. So everyone could be rolling up their sleeves. Richie, Richie Wellens will want the most out of his players, so he'd want a response from them as opposed to drilling them as well. Their manager is going to want exactly the same thing. So it's going to be a scrap. The game might start ugly, but you know, hopefully some, you know, Doncaster is known for their great football. So hopefully you can get the ball down and play and uh, you obviously get the ball up there to the front men and uh, try and hit some goals and get a result. Mm. Of course, with it being two of your old clubs, is it is it always something that well, obviously, when you're looking through the results or the fixtures, one that w- would grab your eye quite early. Yeah, uh, Donny always grabs my eye. Uh, I had a, you know, a traumatising time at uh, Gillingham. <laughs> and uh, um, um, I, I can suppose you read some of the history behind it. Um, it was, you know, the racism case and etc. After I've left a good club, going down to Gillingham, which was two leagues below at that time. Yeah, I just went, uh, you know, a bit downhill and, you know, had some bad experiences. And, you know, I just remember the good memories at Doncaster, the promotion, the LDB trophy, um, the final leads and all that stuff. It was just great. It was good harmony. The manager, Sean, had just got the time, got the best out of me, playing me out of position. They made me believe in myself and stuff like that. So, yeah, it was really, really good. Liam, this game on Tuesday night, another clash of styles as we saw at the weekend against Wickham and Wickham sort of had Rovers' number early on, didn't they? The two goals, from one from a set piece, one from a ball into the box. It's going to be fairly similar in the way that Gillingham are going to try and get some joy on Tuesday and Rovers yeah. are going to defend better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're going to look at um, Doncaster to see where their vulnerability is lay. Um, I think they'll just try and get forward early on. Um, they got they had a big man, um, Akinfemo, up front the other week and... Uh, you know, it was effective, wasn't it? He got his goal. And, uh, yeah, Doncaster have just got to try and get that win- winning mentality and uh, try and, um, you know, just defend if they can. Julian them are just going to push everything forward. They're going to try their best to get the goals. They need the results. So it's just about not having that lack of concentration, about being focused and just uh, getting over the line. That's what you need to do in these situations. Liam, when... Rovers travelled to Priestfield last year. They were 2-0 down after four minutes. So they, could, they got in, back in the game on that occasion and back to two apiece. But not very good memories from the early stages of last season. And it's a, such a key game, given where both teams are in the table. Both teams would, would snatch your arm off for, a, for a three points on Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, back in that, that last trip last season, did really well to get back into the game. What you don't want is what we saw at the weekend is to fall behind to a team like that because we know how, like Wickham did a fantastic job managing the game yeah. in the second half they were very comfortable in that and, and were very difficult to break down if you fall behind to Gillingham that's what you kind of expect from them Rovers did really well on that last case hopefully that following following on from Saturday with another game against a similar direct and, and physical opposition yeah. that should stand the Rovers in good stead they should hopefully learn you know switched on to the same sort of messages that they were receiving in the build-up to that game. They know where they went wrong in conceding the couple of goals and hopefully should be better prepared for what Gillingham are going to throw at them. And of course, the Gillingham side will be struggling for a bit of confidence themselves, you know, four uh, successive defeats, three of them at home as well. So hopefully Rovers are getting them at a good time and and particularly so on the back of the weekend and the lessons they'll have learned from that one. Mm. Yeah, Gillingham, two wins in their first 13. Rovers, two wins in 11. A couple of games in hand on their opponents, just four points behind them. If they can try and bridge that gap a little bit, all of a sudden, it looks a lot better, doesn't it? What you don't want to be doing is losing ground on anybody. Um, you want to be keeping in touch and distance uh, of everyone. There's a lot of games coming up in a short space of time. It can make a, a big difference. But when you're in the position that Rovers in, you've got to make those those little steps and clawing the way closer to, to Gillingham and, and getting above them will be a, a, a big step. Mark, as a, a former target man up top, if you like, you're looking at Gillingham, they've got Badane Oliver up there who scored 17 goals last season. He's already got five this time around. Someone who's been a, a bit of a journeyman, but sometimes you strikers need 
as you said with Rovers, to find that home, don't you? And, and even him at 29 now, it's probably the first time really he's scored so many goals in over a, a shorter period of time. But he's certainly a threat now and Steve Evans is getting the best out of him. Yeah, exactly. So you get certain situations where, you know, you go to a club and you don't quite gel with a team, you don't quite gel with a squad, you don't suit the style of play. And he's had a manager there that's put his arm around him and um, managed to get the best out of him. So, like you said, he's got 17 goals last season and this season he's got five. So, he's got that belief in himself again. So, that's something that Doncaster's got to look out for as well. And uh, obviously, it's a, it's a plus for Gillingham to go there with a striker that's believing in himself and uh, has picked up um, some kind of form. So, yeah, it's just um, about belief, self-confidence and... Uh, just knowing, like, you know, if you're going in a box, you have a chance of scoring. You you know, you impose yourself on the game and express yourself. So, yeah, you've got to give, like, managers credit for that to getting best out of the players. And when you are a striker in such goal-scoring form, I suppose you're not really too fussed who you're coming up against. You're always confident that when you get the ball, you've got a good chance of it in the back of the net. Yeah, exactly. You always have to believe in yourself. Um, if you don't believe in yourself as a striker, you're not going to score goals. Like, you know, I just think you just end up being, you know, having a dry patch in, um, throughout your career where you're just not going to, you know, hit that net and then it'll just deteriorate and deteriorate and deteriorate. You just got to try and believe. Like Sean just did with me. He just made me believe. I, he made me believe I could score goals. He said, you're a big target, man. Your goal scoring record isn't the greatest. I haven't se- I've, I've seen in the past. And he sort of like made me welcome. He made me um, put his arm around me, play me even out of position. He, he even called me in his office one time and said, you, you've got great feet. Like, you know, just things like that just boost you. You know what I mean? And uh, that's why I scored a few when I was at Donny. Um, I scored some of them even on my left foot. So he just got that confidence and belief. And when you got a manager, that's great. Mm. Liam, given Rovers going there, Richie Wellens the second of a, a two-game touchline ban, he sort of didn't want to get dragged into a, a conversation about a contrast in styles on the technical area to him and Steve Evans. But... Is it probably a blessing, given what we've seen over the past few years with a former Rotherham and, and Leeds boss, the way he acts, to, to have Richie Wellens out of that situation, it's probably a good thing, isn't it? Yeah, it probably is, given Richie. We, we know Richie can be a fairly fiery character himself at times if if things aren't necessarily going Rovers' way. But um, when we saw very much from from Steve Evans and his, and his coaching team how much they tried to wind up Andy Butler uh, in that game. Andy Butler only two or three games into his managerial career at that point. Uh, and he, he laughed it off a little bit. You, you're going to get that. And we've seen it before in terms of the, they are so vocal and how it can influence decisions as well. You know, when we saw Fayok and Abiri sent off their little incident right in front of the home dugout, they reacted as though... Uh, Faye had, had shot somebody, and, and Faye ends up getting sent off. It can cause a, you know, the, 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 they're very clever in what in what they do. You know, it, it it does work for them. It gets them in trouble. I'm sure they've they've been fined the pair of them, Steve Evans and Paul Rayner, a fair few times. But it, it does work in the favour sometimes as well. Mm. Yeah, it's not been the happiest of hunting grounds recently, as it for the Rovers. One win in the last three trips more recently, but it is a ground where if you can get on top and you can frustrate not only the crowd. But as well, the coaching staff. The first goal, as so often in any game, is going to be key, isn't it? If Rovers can get it and settle everybody down, then they'll go a long way to getting the result. It's massive, and it'll it'll calm a lot of sort of not nerves, but just just bring calm on the whole performance for Rovers. We've seen that, you know, it was struggle at the weekend having to try and claw the way back and, and, and come up with a bit of inspiration to try and claw the way back. We saw how composed they stayed against MK Dons in the previous game, despite the fact that we're coming under a lot of pressure. But fighting from behind, it, it, it does seem to be a difficult thing for them at the minute. Mm-hmm. If they can get themselves ahead, they've shown that they've got that within them, that composure, that character, that discipline. And, and hopefully that'll take them to a result tomorrow night. Of course, we've spoken about how big the next run of fixtures are. These three in particular in the space of seven days to go against Gillingham, Cheltenham and Cambridge. Three teams and you would imagine won't be too far away from Rovers, certainly if the sort of table as it is now at the end of the season. Rovers need to be picking up a, a decent amount of points in the next week or so, don't they? 
Definitely. And, and Richie Wellens said in, in the build-up to this one, they've got to be looking at staying within touching distance of the teams that are in 13th, 14th. I think Cheltenham at the minute up in 14th. They don't want to get cut adrift from, from that. That's where they want to get as soon as they can and get you know the the immediate threat which which they're facing right now where they are there's a long way to go but the longer it goes on you know that threat just remains um, and and this this could be a big week you know you don't want to be dropping points against teams that that are in or around you and it can transform very quickly there's there's a six week spell where there's going to be a lot of games against teams in that bottom half of the table and what a time for Rovers to, to, to click into gear and get going. It could make a massive difference. And heading towards Christmas, the outlook could be completely different. Mm. Mark, will you be watching on Tuesday night, hoping for a Rovers win then, to, to sort of kick-start themselves on the road? I'll be... Um, I have to go... I'm doing a, um, Sheffield United TV uh, on Tuesday night. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to say it on your channel, but... Um, yeah, I'm just doing that uh, as a uh, Black History Month. I got invited to that and uh, I'm doing it with Carlos Arba. So, unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to. I, I do manage to get eye follow sometimes uh, with Doncaster Rovers and etc. So, you know, when I get home, I will have a look. Um, and uh, obviously, see so two of my old teams and obviously I want to see that uh, battle. It'll be a very interesting one. And, uh, yeah, I'd uh, like to uh, see how, uh, who rolls the sleeves up the most. Liam, just finally then, how do you see it playing out on Tuesday night? Of course, we know it's going to be a big physical battle, but if Rovers can contain that threat from Gillingham, they've got enough, haven't they, to, to go there and get a result? I think they definitely have. I think they definitely have. It just it needs to go the way they need to, you know, as we said, stay disciplined and, 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 and you know, keep that composure that, that we know they've got. I can see it being very tight. I can see there being long periods where there's quite a, a bit of frustration from a Rovers perspective. So if, if you were pushing me for a result, I'd say perhaps a, a one-all draw.